People of the internet, we gotta cover something. It's a rivalry as old as Cain and Abel. I guess that settles it. Godzilla versus King Kong. And dare I say it, Smeagol versus Gollum. Lucky you so. Yes, you might already know because you clicked on the video and read the title, but that is shooting handheld versus shooting on a gimbal. Now, if you followed my work or seen me talk at a workshop or a retreat, you know that I ditched a gimbal back in 2020. But either way, in this video, I'm gonna be trying my best to convince you to ditch the gimbal and start shooting handheld. It's going to make your wedding films way better and I'm here to prove it to you. That's the whole point of me making this video. If we haven't met yet, my name's Stanton and I'm here to help elevate your wedding videography skills through YouTube. Now, if I do happen to convince you to start shooting handheld, you can go down to the description, click the link, and you're gonna find a PDF that I made just for you where you can find all the parts the components, the links to buy everything that you're seeing right here for this hand Ooh. for this handheld rig right here. Lastly, before we jump in, subscribe if you haven't. It'd mean the absolute world to me. More than the ring meant to Gollum. More than Anne meant to King Kong. Okay, I digress, let's dive in. Let's start off by talking about the wedding day. What is a wedding day, you might ask? Well, I'm glad you asked, because if we boil it down plain and simple, a wedding day is a live event. And when you're shooting a live event, that means that you don't have actors, you don't have a stage, and you can't always predict what's going to happen. You're just there to capture what happens and try to make it look as good as possible in the meantime, hoping that the venue, the weather, and the people there all cooperate to give you what you need to make a great wedding film. This is crucial for me to state before we start getting into this video, because we need to start transforming our minds on what a wedding day actually is. Once we do that, we need to figure out the best way to shoot this live event, how to predict movement, and be ready for anything in a moment's notice. With that distinction clearly made, let's go ahead and jump into the positive side of shooting on a gimbal, the good things about it. Now, I know that many of you that are watching this video are probably gimbal shooters. Most wedding videographers are, and I get it, I promise. It's a cool tool, and it's kind of bred into us as wedding videographers that this is a staple piece of our arsenal of gear that we bring on a wedding day. But before I start getting too subjective with my thoughts on the gimbal, let's go ahead and talk about the positives. Firstly, stability. That's like the biggest thing, that's the only thing that draws us to using a gimbal, and it's by far the most positive thing about using a gimbal. With the click of a button and about a minute of balancing your gimbal, you're on your way to having cinema quality stability in the palm of your hand. Which leads me to my next pro, affordability. Compared to a jib, an easy rig, or one of those big fancy cinematic robot things, a gimbal is crazy affordable. And I'm talking like you can get one that's just a year or two old on Facebook Marketplace or somewhere like that for just a couple hundred bucks. So yes, I see the appeal. Third, ease of use. You can basically take somebody that has never shot on a gimbal before, teach them how to balance it, teach them how to use it in under 30 minutes. You don't have to be a pro to use a gimbal and you can actually get some decent shots out of it just out the gate. DJI and other manufacturers have made these things really easy to use right out of the box and so that's why ease of use is my third positive. So now let's get into the cons of shooting on a gimbal which is going to be a great segue into why I think you should be shooting handheld. Oftentimes, and correct me if I'm wrong and let me know in the comments below, people that shoot on gimbals don't have them in their hands for the entirety of the day. And at that the thing requires batteries to be sitting in this position right here. And although the batteries can last up to 12 hours, most people are conservative and just in case they're gonna turn it off when they're not using it. Now, if we go back to my point about weddings being live events and bring it back to this point, you can see how setting your gimbal down is gonna make you unprepared for capturing moments. Not only is it removed from your person, but you're gonna have to turn it back on if you turn it off to save battery, or if you change lenses, you gotta rebalance it again. And if you factor in things like deadpan and the three axis of stabilization, quickly turning on, picking up, and pointing your camera in the right direction just isn't always going to happen well. I can't count how many times that I missed moments back whenever I was shooting on a gimbal because I was just fiddling with trying to get this thing pointed in the right direction. Now, <clears throat> enter handheld. With a handheld rig, at least the way that I have mine set up, my camera is always inches away from me, it's always on my person, and I'm always ready to grab it at a moment's notice. Since I use a strap on this camera, it's hanging on my neck, it's on my person, if I'm doing something else with my hands, like setting up lights or getting audio ready, I can quickly grab my camera that's just dangling on my side and capture a moment that's about to happen. It should also be noted that I can do this with good composition too, at a moment's notice. If you notice anything about gimbal shooters, and I'm not trying to hate or anything like that, but their composition typically isn't the best. The focus when you're on a gimbal is getting cool movements and just trying to get the thing to point in the right direction. Deadpan isn't always helpful whenever you're trying to compose well. You've probably been in a situation where you've been trying to compose well, but because of the deadpan they have set on your gimbal, you can't quite get it in the correct position. Now as a handheld shooter, because you're not having to worry about holding a piece of equipment like this and compensating for deadpan, you have a lot more mental bandwidth to focus on things like exposure, composition, and white balance. As a wedding videographer, it's really important that we dial these things in. And that's an important note to make, because when you're shooting handheld, 
held, your hands are actually on the camera. You can make tiny little adjustments at a moment's notice because your thumb, your index fingers are all right there. The handheld rig basically just becomes an extension of your body because you're actually touching it. This would be an extension of your body, but this is just another extension to get to your camera. And so it's further away from you and it's more awkward and harder and more time consuming to actually do something with your camera. Basically, this thing takes a lot more time and time is everything on a wedding day. More importantly, being prepared is everything on a wedding day. And among a lot of other things, shooting handheld also lets you change lenses really quickly as well. I did a video about solo shooting weddings a couple weeks ago and in it, I show you how quickly I can change a lens using my lens holster and it takes me about six seconds. Compare that to changing a lens on this and having to rebalance, turn it off and on, big difference. Also, my lens holster that I use is my favorite piece of equipment. You can find a link to that in the description below. You just put it on your side, attach it to your belt. Single-handedly, other than my camera, it's the most valuable piece of equipment that I bring with me on a wedding day. Now, at this point, you're probably saying to yourself, okay, yes, I get it. Shooting handheld is gonna make me a lot more prepared. I understand that this thing takes more time and it's a little bit more clunky, but Stanton, I got shaky hands. There is no way that I'm gonna hold a camera and I'm gonna get good looking footage that I'm gonna be able to use to make a great wedding film. Yes, I'm glad that you asked this. I'm glad that you brought this up because these hands right here are like the shakiest hands on earth. I mean, you can probably like see them shaking right now. But for real, I got some really shaky hands, but I still choose to shoot handheld on wedding days. You see, my handheld rig has straps on it. I use this strap to go around my neck and underneath my arm, and I pull that away from me. By pulling it away from me, I'm creating an extra point of stabilization. From there, as far as movement goes, the only movement that I'm gonna do is tiny little movements swaying back and forth with my hips. And this is a rabbit trail here, but you don't need crazy movements to make your wedding films look great. Go watch any big budget Hollywood movie, and you're gonna notice that the most beautiful shots are not the ones with crazy, insane movements, are the ones that have good lighting and good composition. And I'm not saying that there's not a place for really cool movements, and I'm not saying that big movements aren't cool, but big movements normally don't belong in weddings, and normally people are butchering big movements whenever they're trying to put them in the wedding films. So anyway, back to what I was saying, by pulling the camera strap away from me, putting the camera at arm's length, creating that extra point of stabilization and moving back and forth, I have a really good start in terms of stabilization. It's also worth noting that the wider your lens, the more stable that your footage is going to appear to look. That's also not factoring in all the other things like lens stabilization and camera stabilization, stabilization that you get from slowing your footage down in post, and also stabilization that you get in your editor like Warp Stabilizer and Premiere Pro. Also, I don't want to assume that everybody knows this, but if you're shooting in like 60 frames per second or 120 frames per second, you can slow your footage down. And when you slow your footage down, any shakes that you have in it, if you're shaking like this, it's going to make that shake go slower, therefore making it look like it's more smooth. Now, I'm not gonna sit here and say that you're gonna get more stable footage from shooting on this than this. It's pretty obvious that this three axis of stabilization is going to be the best thing for stabilizing your footage. But I think that gimbal shooters need to transform their thinking on movement in general. Even if you decide to stay on a gimbal after this, whether you're shooting handheld or gimbal, a lot of people think that movement makes things a lot more interesting. And while in some ways, in some cases, this can be true, on a wedding day, most of the time it's not going to. Subtle movements are gonna make things look more visually appealing, especially whenever you have good composition and good exposure and good light. Those things stand out way more than whenever somebody takes a gimbal and moves it side to side at 80 miles an hour trying to shoot a bride's shoes. No, take the bride's shoes, put them in good light, do a tiny little movement with your handheld rig, make sure you got good composition and good exposure, and you're off to the races for making a great wedding film. All that to say, you don't need movement in your wedding films to make them interesting. One of my favorite films that I ever made is a Joshua Tree wedding. I ended up shooting it in 24 frames per second, which means I'm not slowing my footage down, so I held all my shots really stable, but I made sure that my shots had good exposure and good composition, and it's one of my favorite films. So remember, you don't need a ton of movement, you just need to have good exposure and good composition and capture moments. The best wedding films are the ones where the moments are captured beautifully and preparedly. This ties into both of my points that I've made so far. By shooting handheld, you're letting the camera be an extension of yourself. You can focus on fine-tuning things like your exposure and composition, all while being prepared to capture moments, and those moments are going to make your film great. Last but certainly not least, by shooting handheld, you're opening the door to being more creative. If you've ever shot on a gimbal, you know how awkward and clunky these things can be, not to mention that you're going to be pretty tired after holding this thing for 10 to 12 hours on a wedding day, but also how long it takes for you to get your gimbal into the correct position to capture a moment. And oftentimes once you get it there, you notice you need to make a white balance change, you notice you need to make an exposure change, and then you have to bring it back to yourself, you have to press the buttons, and you have to move it back to where it was. This is tiring. Not just physically tiring, but mentally tiring as well. 
down. And when you're getting tired mentally, you're sucking up a lot of room for creativity. You're having to think about a lot of other things than just how to make this film as good as you can. And a lot of those good films come from being creative on top of being prepared for moments. It is so much easier to take a handheld rig, hold it really, really high over a bride, shoot down over her shoulder while she's writing vows, than it is to take this and to do the same thing. It's hard to get into the right position. You're having to hold it way away from your body to get it up high. And again, even though they're small and a lot more lightweight these days, they're still hard to get into the correct position, even with something that is typically a good thing like deadpan. Whether you're getting high or shooting low, you're using a lot more mental energy with the gimbal to try to get into the correct position to get a good looking shot. Handheld truly becomes an extension of your body, making it much more easy to be creative, move around, crouch down in a corner behind a couch, jump up on top of a bed and shoot down at something. You name it, this thing works a lot better in so many more wedding day situations than running around with this piece of equipment. Gimbals also seem to have a weird hypnotic effect on people to where they lock into doing the same movements over and over and over. And that's much more noticeable because the movements that gimbal users are doing are much bigger. Let's break this down. People put their cameras on gimbals to get stable footage. Because it's so stable, you can really see it the best whenever you're moving a lot. But that doesn't inherently make you creative because you're moving a lot. And so you're just there on a wedding day shooting a ceremony space and you're like, ooh, I could get this cool push in. So you do your push in. Then you're like, okay, I can go side to side, which is the second most overused gimbal movement. And the third and most disgusting one is when gimbal users rotate in a circle around the subject that they're shooting. These are such gross movements to be doing on a gimbal and they're so overused. So anyway, here's the big takeaways from this video. Shooting handheld is gonna give you ease of access to the tool that you were hired to use on a wedding day. It's gonna make you more prepared to capture moments. And at a live event like weddings, moments are everything, especially for putting together a great film. It's also gonna open up your mental space to be creative and try new things throughout the day, making your films inherently better. I'm sure I missed something in this video. And if I did, please let me know in the comments below. Either way, let me know what you thought of this video. I hope it was helpful. Again, if you're interested in shooting handheld, go to the link in the description where you can download a PDF where I have links to all the parts that I use to put together my handheld rig. Guys, thanks so much for watching. I hope at a minimum this video was insightful and I'll see you next time.